Greetings everyone, Rob Chastner here, continuing in our study of connecting the dots between the Old and the New Testament. Um, and we started at Genesis, and that's what we're, what we're doing. We're connecting the dots, and um, this helps us to know that everything, uh, everyone can be confident in the fact that the Bible is true. It is the Word of God, and it's the only Word of God. For that reason, we like to show how everything fits. And so in Acts chapter 3, which is just a little bit of a review, um, um, Peter is ending up in the second message after Pentecost. Everything is still concerned with uh, everything is, is still concerned with the temple and all the covenant promises made to Israel. Now Peter is ending up with a second message after Pentecost and already a few weeks have gone by, um, maybe even a few months. And so in Acts chapter 3 verse 24, yea, and all the prophets. Well, now, if you're a Bible student, what's that referring to? That's referring to the Old Testament. So the old prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold or prophesied uh, of these days. Now, you remember the first thing you do is determine who's writing, then what you, uh, who, what is it, what is he writing, and then to whom is he writing? When is it written? And what are the circumstances? What went before? What follows? What's Peter talking about here? What Peter's talking about here uh, when he says, when he says, Samuel and those that follow after have spoken to these days. This is still a part of that prophetic end time as far as the Old Testament was concerned. Now, um, all right, so you, uh, verse 25, you are the children of prophets they were the they were the ones of to whom all the old testament prophets wrote um you know and they started with samuel now who was the next uh, great prophet that would be david and then uh, solomon uh you know solomon got his words in the in, in with ecclesiastes and so forth then uh you start with the major prophets you've got jeremiah you've got um isaiah ezekiel Daniel, then those uh, 12 minor prophets, all of them writing pretty much on the same level, prophesying this glorious earthly kingdom that God's going to give to Israel. So all of the word uh, from Samuel through uh, where we get to Peter here, um, this time uh, is how Israel was being admonished to look for that glorious kingdom. Um, but from the vantage point, they rejected it. So that whole program had to be laid aside. And so, uh, as we're going to see, God brought, uh, this other dispensation in through the apostle Paul, uh, which we call the age of grace. It is totally unknown to the prophets. They never once said one word concerning the Gentile age of grace. Their writings were all directed to Israel and Israel's coming king. Now in Acts chapter 3 verse 25, you are the children of the prophets and um, uh, and of the covenant. Now um, I did uh, a whole series of Bible studies on the covenants of the Bible which you can find on my YouTube channel if that's of interest. So again, you are the children of the prophets and the covenant which God made with the fathers saying unto Abraham, that will be back in Genesis 12, and in thy seed, in other words, the offspring, shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Well, who was included in the seed uh, of Abraham? That would be Jesus Christ. Uh, we have that accounting, uh, of course, in Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 3. Um, so unto you first, God, verse 26. Now remember uh, our rule of Bible study. Who, who, is, who is he talking to? Okay, he's talking to Israel, the Jewish people. So, unto you Jews first, that's what it all, where it all started. Having raised up his son Jesus after they rejected him, and as Peter says in chapter 2, they killed him, but God raised him from the dead. So, the king is still alive. He's still going to fulfill the prophecies. That's the whole thrust of the early chapters of, of, um, of Acts. 
that the one they killed was alive and that he could still fulfill the promises. So God, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him uh, to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. So God expects the whole nation to respond before he could actually fulfill the promises, but they didn't. Only a very small percentage did. But on the other hand, when the next apostle comes, he never ta tells Paul, you're going to go out and win them all. You're going to have some, it says. It's a remnant. And that's the way we are today. God is just calling out one here and one there. And uh, it's the way of Christianity, uh, the way it's uh, unfolded. It's not the multitudes. Uh, it's, it's a remnant. Now, continuing on with Peter and Jerusalem believers, uh, let's look at chapter 4, starting in verse 32. Uh, and the multitude, now that indicates a fairly large number of people, the multitude of them that believed. Now you stop and think for a moment, believed what for salvation? That Christ died for their sins and rose again? No, that's not, that's not what was, was preached to the Jews. It was only, that was preached to the Gentiles in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But to believe on him, on his name. And so they're believing on his name uh, that he is the promised Messiah. Uh, and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one, uh, one soul, neither said any of them that ought uh, of, the, of things which he possessed was on his own, but they had all things common. Now stop and think, you've got multitudes of people, and as we saw in our previous studies, they've come from every corner of that then known earth, you know, Far East, uh, Europe, Asia Minor, Great Britain, North Africa, all the civilized nations of the Roman Empire. And these Jews have been coming from all corners of the Roman Empire. They literally filled up Jerusalem, but most of them evidently stayed and did not go back. And why? Because they believed that Jesus' return would happen within their lifetime, maybe within the next weeks or months. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. So this was a pure commune, or there's like communism, but it wasn't in the evil side, but it was more in the, a righteous kind of communism. It was a commune kind of living. Nobody was claiming anything more than their neighbors. They all pulled their, res pooled their resources and uh, they were living in a common, on common wealth that had been accumulated by all the members. Um, now you have to remember if you've got multitudes, thousands, because 3,000 were saved on the day of Pentecost and every day from then on multitudes were coming upon salvation. Were, they were all glued together in Jerusalem and now uh, these people are pulling their resources. And then look what it says. Uh, verse 33, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. So in other words, um, that they knew their king was alive. There's no salvation attached to it. That's where people miss the boat. P Peter never says, believe that Jesus died for your sins and rose again. Uh, that was not a Jewish thing. That was the, that was later on from from Paul. Peter says that the one you've killed is alive, and we he will yet come and bring in the kingdom. Now, that's not hard to understand, and you can look for it and check me out. You won't find it associated with their salvation. It was merely the uh, emphatic fact that Jesus was alive, and he is the promised Messiah. So verse 33 and, and 34, and uh, with great power gave the apostle the apostles witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ uh, and great grace upon them all. So in other words, the blessings were just flowing on this congregation of Jews in Jerusalem. Verse 34, neither were there any among them that lacked. Uh, so nobody was hungry, nobody was without food or shelter for as many as have possessed the lands of houses. So what did they, what, what did they do with them? You know, you, you, they, they turned, they turned all of their homes in their, wherever they were raised in the dispersion and they turned it into cash and they brought the cash to the feet of the apostles. 
and they and so they all pulled their money and they were lacking for nothing you know for as many as the possessors of land or houses sold them and they brought the price of those things they were sold you know see it's very clear language and laid them down the, the apostles feet and district and, and distribution was made to every man according to his needs um, so that means that if you had a household of six, you'd get more than a household of two. And so verse 36, and Joseph, Joe, uh, Joseph says, I'm um, not sure how to pronounce that, who, who by the apostles was named Barnabas, uh, who um, being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, in other words, he was a priest, the tribe of the priest, and of the country of Cyprus, or the island, now, if you know geography, Cyprus has always been a rather productive piece of real estate. They've got beautiful vineyards and orchards, and Cyprus is a good place to own property. So if you own land, and so he owns some land uh, in the country of Cyprus. Verse 37, having land, he sold it, brought the money, and laid it on the, the apostles' feet. So do you think Barnabas was the only one that did that? They had Jews from all over, North Africa, Italy, Greece all over Asia Minor and Europe. Um, now, and the numbers are increasing. Let's look at chapter 5, Acts 5, verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among them. Uh, why were the 12 given the same signs and wonders that Jesus practiced? It was for the same purpose. Now, let's back up to... Jesus's earthly ministry, what was the reason for his signs, wonders, and miracles? It was to convince Israel to, of whom he was. Um, what are they still trying to do? Convince Israel that the one they crucified was the Christ. And of course, the word Christ means uh, uh, Messiah in, in Greek or Mashiach in Hebrew. Nothing has changed except the work of the cross is now complete. Uh, verse 513, um, and the rest dur durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And then 14, and believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both men and women. So you can see there was just a massive increase. The scripture never tells us, but where do you suppose they fed all of these people? You know, they, uh, you know, they were in Jerusalem. They had to have some kind of a large facility, kind of like a battalion mess hall, uh, because there were thousands of people that were eating in the same hour. But it took facilities. It took kitchens. It took, you know, tables and chairs and so forth. And so the same thing going on here with the thousands of them, the, the Jewish believers in Israel. Let's look at Acts 2, verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word, of course, that is Peter's word, were baptized on this at the same day. That's the day of Pentecost. And they were added on to about 3,000 souls. So there's a lot of people there. Um, um, you know, so there's a lot of administration that was required. All right, let's look at Acts chapter 6, verse 1. In those days, when the number of disciples was multiplied, um, there arose a murmuring, murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews. Now, you know, this is the first uh, crack, so to speak, in this beautiful veneer of this glorious congregation of believing Jews. Remember, it said back in chapter 4 that they were all in accord. Everything was going well, no arguments, no disputes. Then all of a sudden, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews. Now, you have to know a little bit about Greek. Who were the Grecians? They were the Jews who had been raised in and learned the language and customs of the foreign country. Uh, out of this multitude of Jews that had come in from every corner of the world, um, they had, be, had become believers and had become part of this great Jewish congregation. And all this accumulated wealth um, to meet their every need uh, there were Grecian widows. Um, uh, there were homeless. Uh, they, you know, they were not homeless Jews. They were Jews from other areas of the world. And, 
you know, they sold their property to be part of this commune uh, to be there awaiting Jesus' uh, return, which they thought was going to be weeks or months ahead. Um, you know, um, all right, so there arose an, a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Well, what does that tell you? Somebody's in control. Um, you know, there had to be, so it was a, an administrative problem that they had to deal with. All right, we'll pick it up in the next Bible study. Um, the next lesson we'll pick up at this point. I hope this has been helpful and informative, and thank you for viewing. Good day.